Hi, my name is John Polstad, and I'm a member of the Metro Independent Business Alliance, which is a, exclusively an organization of small independent businesses in the Twin Cities area. And my topic here is to talk about why the small business would benefit from health care reform. I'd like to change it slightly to how we would benefit from universal single payer, because our organization has studied that issue carefully over a long period of time, and unanimously our board supported universal single payer. I think we're the only business organization in the state that has, at least that I know of. So before I get into why we, well, how it would benefit us, I would like to ask the question of, Maybe you're asking the question, why should you care about how small business does? I want to tell you why you should care. Small business provides over 50% of employment in America. In a latest study by the Minnesota Health Research Service, over 90% of new jobs in Minnesota were created by small independent businesses. So Minnesota, uh, in Minnesota, small business is a major and vital part of our community and our economy. So, therefore, we need to do something to help small business to help ourselves. So how would your health reform benefit small business? Small business pays a significantly higher premium than uh, comparable large businesses. And the reason, of course, is because we are small companies, we have a small pool. And the insurance companies will tell you that the larger your pool, the, the greater the risk is shared across the pool, and then it reduces your rate. Using the insurance company's own logic, I would like to point out that if we had the entire state of Minnesota or the entire United States in one pool, it would be the most cost-effective and efficient way of providing uh, health care for us. In addition to the higher cost of health insurance for small business, it is disproportionately costly for us to administer our programs. We do not have an entire department. We have to do this ourselves. Recent studies have shown that small businesses spend up to 40 hours per year uh, working on their health plans. That's if everything is going well. Uh, I, in my company, I do contracts and have done them for years. I can read them and I can understand them. I always work with a lawyer, but I do understand them. I have tried to read my health insurance plan. I cannot <laughs> understand anything that is in it. So removing the burden of private health insurance, the current system that we have, will free business owners and their resources so they can apply it to growing their business, which will mean growing jobs and creating jobs and creating economic development in the community. Now, I want to state a study done, in, uh, it was published in an article in Business Week in, in February of 1994, and the article was written by Chris Farrell. Some of you may know Chris Farrell, he's done a bunch of work recently on public radio. And this was a study done of what happened in Canada after they went to single payer. And what they found out, this was a, a group, uh, the organization was called the National Bureau of Economic Research, a conservative, somewhat conservative uh, organization. And uh, Maria Hanratty and uh, Jonathan Gruber were the ones that did the study. And they found that two years after Canada went to universal health care, employment increased by 2%, job and wages increased. And most of all, business increased and profits increased. And their, their analysis was that the burden of health care was removed off the backs of businesses so they were able to do their business. So, as a business, uh, we are in a, in a global economy. They tell us this all the time. Yet the United States is the only industrialized country in the world where we are forced to put the cost of health care into our cost of goods. Now think about that for a second. The rest of the world does not have to do this, but we have to put health care into our cost of goods. So how can we compete in a global economy? So you hear the pundits on television all the time say, hey, get, grow up, get used to it's a global economy. I say, give us what they have and we'll compete with them. <laughs> Who really pays for health care today? I think a lot of people don't realize this, so I want to go into it. At my business, I choose the plan, I write the check, and then I pass that expense along to my customers. And they, in turn, pass it along to their customers. So who pays for health care? This is one of those eureka moments for me some years ago. I realized that people who pay for health care in America, are, it's anybody who pays, buys any goods or services or pays any tax. Now, who do you expect that includes? That's everybody. So if we're only paying for it, every time we buy something, 
let's find the most cost-effective, efficient way of doing it and just do it ourselves. That's a single payer, by the way. Uh, Look at, many people have said that we should do what big business has done. What big business is doing, many of them in Minnesota are doing it, they're self-insuring. They're taking their money, putting it in their pool, getting in their own staff to administer it so they can save money. Our state, cities, and counties, are they don't insure our buildings. Our public buildings are not insured. They have a, a fund for that, but we are self-insuring our buildings. And I want to ask the question, why are our buildings more important than our people? Critical attacks this program as a social program. However, the reason we must adopt this approach is not for ideological reasons, which we hear all the time, the ideological reasons. We must do it for economic reasons. President Obama has recently stated that health care now consumes 18% of GDP and will soon be 20%. The health care crisis drags on. Let me just finish with my last line then. In closing, I want to quote Winston Church Churchill who said, America will always do the right thing after they have tried everything else. I say, we have tried everything else. Now it's time to do the right thing. Thank you.